What I'd like to do is to get on with a subject that you've been most involved in since you've done all these things that we've been discussing, and that is psychotronics. I'd like to show you a video clip on Soviet psychotronics and ask for your comment, and we'll take off into that area. Okay. But in the Soviet Union, a radio frequency, or RF device, has been used for over 30 years to manipulate the moods of mental patients. It's called a lighter machine. It radiates pulses of radio frequency energy, as well as light, sound, and heat. The pulse rate is in the extremely low frequency range, between 0 and 100 pulses per second. Dr. Ross Aidy is the top researcher at the Veterans Administration Hospital in Loma Linda, California. He has been investigating the effects of the LIDAR machine. Now, what do the Soviets use this machine for? Well, they don't use it anymore. We should be very clear that uh, this is a machine which is regarded by them as, as uh, somewhat obsolete technologically. This scientist, who did not want his identity revealed, is employed by the U.S. government and has done secret RF weapons research. He believes that tests done with the LIDA and similar machines prove that humans are susceptible to remote alterations of mood and awareness. Certain kinds of weak electromagnetic signals work exactly like drugs. And so the promise is that anything you can do with drugs, you could do with the right electromagnetic signals. Apparently, there are specific sites involved, specific functions involved. It's a matter of matching up, just like it is with a pill or a drug, to cause and effect. You could have a cause and effect relationship between a magnetic field and a biological function. This sound, which is received by shortwave radios in the United States, is generated by another Soviet radio frequency device. It is known as the woodpecker because of its tapping noise. It is broadcast by a number of high-powered radio transmitters operating deep in the Soviet Union since July 4, 1976. Though the official Defense Department explanation of the woodpecker is that it is an over-the-horizon radar designed to track U.S. missile launches, some uh, scientists suspect well, that the woodpecker is designed to interfere with human uh, brain function. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, the potential that this has for producing a direct psychoactive effect upon the total American population is there. Has never been disproven. Dr. Robert Becker is a pioneer in the field of bioeffects of electromagnetism. Uh, the single range within which the woodpecker operates is that which has been reported by many investigators to produce a tranquilizing effect upon animals. We are just incredibly sensitive to these magnetic stimuli. Dr. Bob Beck, a PhD in nuclear engineering, has done extensive research into electromagnetic effects on humans. The signal is permeating power grids in the United States. It was being picked up by power lines, re-radiated. It was coming into the homes on the light circuits. Well, uh, I, it was a little unclear, but I knew two of the gentlemen on the uh, Bob Beck, and I think Becker was the other one. And basically, of course, they're talking about psychotronics. Um, if I can translate in my Please words, do. Uh, psychotronics um, is the let me pick these words very carefully, is the long-range, long-range modification or manipulation of behavior by electronic, specifically radio means. In other words, you use uh, electromagnetic uh, energy, radio transmissions, to affect human behavior at a distance. In other words, what you're doing is that you are merging radio engineering and power psychology. This is what I think the Soviets can do. This is something which we have not in the West uh, looked at too carefully. What I think the Soviets can do, and this I think was the intent of this film clip, um, one let me summarize what they can do and then in more de detail about one or two of these facets. One, they can manipulate behavior at a distance. For example, they could create a riot, which you couldn't stop in this auditorium right out of that transmitter. What they would do specifically is that, that the name of the transmitter is not the one I know. I know it as the Gomel transmitter. Uh, he called it the woodpecker signal. Uh, but what they do, they broadcast the signal at, a, at uh, to create a riot, you, you broadcast 11 hertz, 11 cycles per second, beamed into this room. And it would, without you knowing, 
you would start to get uncomfortable, then upset, and um, then I presume start getting a little uh, little active, like throwing the plants around or breaking the chairs, <laughs> things like that. Um, you use specific, what I call the radio frequency windows. Uh, the 11 hertz will create that kind of behavior. Other uh, other frequencies, <clears throat> other windows will create other kinds of behavior. You can create a passive behavior. You can make people go to sleep. You can create narcotic effects. It has been used actually as an antidote, uh, as a cure for narco narcotic addiction. Um, you can um, make people alert. You can make them misconstrue, misunderstand things. Each has a specific, very precise uh, frequency. Uh, we know what these frequencies are. We know the behavior modification that can be brought about. We know the Soviets are using it. Uh, let me give you two. Three, I'll give you three examples. One, the Moscow Embassy, 1977. The State Department discovered that uh, its employees were being zapped by, by what they call microwaves. That were really, really these uh, transmissions extremely low frequency transmissions. The ambassador, in fact, had uh, heart problems as a result of it. And you can induce medical effects. You can induce heart attacks at a distance with certain frequencies. Um, that's one example we know. The State Department then took the wrong approach. It's put screens on windows, but we know that copper and steel screening will not shield from alpha, extremely low frequency waves. It, the, there is another antidote which we can get into later if you want. Um, one, we know you can modify behavior through beaming radio waves on specific frequencies at a distance. We can do that. How great a distance? Well, they're, they're, the, the um, transmitter they're using is at Gomel. We know that that was beamed on Eugene, Oregon in the late 70s. Uh, they were picking up, I forget the, uh, the cycles per second, I think it was about 9, 9 hertz. And uh, that was very intense at 2,000 feet. They got public health people picked up a number of, well, I think, 20, 30, 40 cases of uh, disorientation, headaches, uh, nausea, that kind of thing, which you would get from that frequency. A more clear example is not Eugene, Oregon, although I'm fairly sure of that case, is the Canadian case. It's Kirkland Lake and Timmins, Ontario, both bombarded by the Soviets. In this case, I'm in touch with a Canadian scientist who did the analysis for the Canadian government. There is no question in his mind that the Soviets bombarded Kirkland Lake and Timmins with uh, a frequency which would create disorientation, headaches, and nausea, that kind of thing. So the distance, uh, if you can... Um, it's as if you can get a radio wave in there, you can get this effect in there. It's so the frequency on which it operates. The purpose of this was an experiment to prove what they could do and what they could do in wartime? I think in the early 70s, <clears throat> this was experimentation. Uh, I think what they're doing today is not exper experimentation. If you look at the State Department, which as I see it, has not made one decision in our favor. Every decision is against us. If you look what happened in the Moscow Embassy, if you get short saying that uh, counterintelligence is, is not productive, you know, these ridiculous statements, you begin to think that, okay, you can bring this about through psychoactive warfare, psychoactive manipulation use, using elf waves, uh, extremely low frequency waves. And that's what Bob, uh, Robert Beck and uh, the other gentleman now, were saying. The, on do that. the Soviets select certain individuals in the United States, or do they take a picture of them and put it in a machine ah, in the Soviet that's a Union? Field. Or what do they do? Uh, there's several different things here. Firstly, um, I, don't, I cannot prove that the Soviets have done this, but what I do know is that the West Germans issued their diplomats with protective devices about 10 years ago. In fact, I have the circuit diagrams for these protective devices. The West Germans have recognized the problem. They have taken moves against it. The State Department in 78 was not recognizing the problem. I don't know if they've taken any moves against it. It looks as if they have not. Uh, now, this, um, this is where I am very, very disturbed because 
In the West, we don't think in terms of warfare, certainly not to achieve objectives. Well, at least most of us don't, except the elite. And I'm concerned that while the elite is out to control the world, the Russian, given the Russian mind and the technology we've given them, is going to use this technology back against us in forms which we don't accept. And there's no question that our establishment engineers don't, haven't until recently accepted uh, um, behavioral modification through radio engineering. Now, both these gentlemen you noticed on here, they can talk because they're outside the establishment. They do not work for the government. In fact, I just had a letter from one of them. And uh, this is the consensus among these people that these, one, this can be done, and secondly, it is being done. Now, there are other things that, in addition to uh, behavioral manipulation, they're a little, little more, a little harder to pinpoint. I rather suspect that the service <clears throat> can identify objects at a distance, say through radar. They can estimate the shape, the size, and the composition. In other words, one can analyze the return spectrum and analyze that and find the composition of what they're looking at. So theoretically, you could put a beam into, say, this top secret installation uh, inside it, and you could get a picture back, very roughly, giving the shape, the size, and the composition of the article that was the other end of that beam. They can use it, I suspect, for telepathy. Telepathy, for a long time, has been a random sort of phenomena. I think possibly you could use radio, beam, radio waves as a carrier for telepathy. Perhaps even for psychokinesis too. Well, telepathy is, can be mind manipulation. Yeah. If someone doesn't recognize it as an yeah. exterior communication. Yeah. So that basically is what psych psychokinesis is. Then the one you mentioned about the, uh, the putting the picture in the well um, the number of end uses for that, I don't know which one you had in mind, but for example, it could be used for finding people, uh, uh, tracing people. You could put a picture of a person within this machine and uh, through a map, have it trace out the coordinates where the person is. I, uh, I heard that it was used in one case, uh, the US Navy, and now I cannot verify this, it's only what it is, it's hearsay, that the US Navy did experiment with this kind of operation by getting the signatures of Soviet submarine commanders and using this process for identifying the location of this particular submarine. Now that's a fantastic achievement by it's a signature. A yes. You can't hide anything on this earth, not even a thimble. Yes. Now do you think the Soviets are targeting certain segments of our population that are the leadership, the Congress, the military, or do you think that over the pole are coming uh, ELF waves that are affecting the entire population, beaming these between 3 and 4 a.m. in the morning and so forth. Yes. Well, if you look at Washington, you know, you go into Washington, it's like a world apart. And you go through all, like we did earlier, do we explain these things by stupidity, by ignorance? And you almost left up by default with this behavioristic manipulation. It's the only one that really fits. I mean, these people are so out of touch with reality, as I see it, and as you see it, that um, this really becomes the only explanation of the whole water. Well, when you have a few people that are not in any way influenced by it and take their stand for reality, for truth, for common sense, do these people have a natural uh, repellent of these kind of energy waves? Is it the strength of God within them, or what is it that uh, keeps some people totally clear in their thinking? I think there's got to be an inner force, and uh, a spiritual power, which enables us, perhaps gives us an inner strength to see truth, to see things as they really are. And uh, these people, as you mentioned, don't have this inner strength, this inner power, this inner reflection of God. And when you look at the people who are receptive and who tout this line, uh, they seem to have had the capacity for vulnerability to this before they came under that attack. 
Like I Schultz, for instance. The vulnerability. Yeah, the, like Schultz. I mean, you could say he's a victim of ELF waves, but Schultz was Schultz before he was a victim of ELF waves, is what I'm saying. Yes, it's whether the Soviets manipulated his psychological weaknesses or yes. the ELF waves brought them about. But the, the kind of person you get in Washington, a person who searches for power, you can guarantee that 95% of the people in Washington have got this lack of inner strength, as you mentioned. It. You know, it, it's been observed by top people in Washington that the attrition rate on the part of people visiting the Soviet Union and then coming back and being soft on communism is amazing. In fact, they can go to the Soviet Union and be totally turned around in their views and become pro-Soviet. Do you think that, therefore, there is a greater effect of this mind manipulation in Soviet territory at closer range? You're getting this with businessmen. These top businessmen go to the Soviet Union and they come back. Dwayne Andrews is a very good example. Uh, he's chairman of uh, Archer, Daniel, Archer Daniels Midland. You, they come back from the Soviet Union and they may as well be reading a translation of Parker when they come back. It's the straight party line, right the way down. No, they weren't always like that. But you do get this phenomenon, not so much with diplomats, but you certainly get it with businessmen. They go there, they wind and dine. I suspect they get this psychological manipulation and they come back and then they, uh, they parrot the party line. When you challenge them, they become confused and hostile. That's a real telltale sign, isn't real it? Real telltale sign. The hostility is a front because there's no reason behind it. Yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's a bluster. It's a bluster. And I've seen that at first hand. They become very antagonistic. I've seen it too. Yes. Which is weakness. There's nothing behind it. They, they're confused themselves why they're saying this and why.